Hey, it's been a while. I'm glad to be back with a new anti to remake video. It's been a good while, but I've made some big code changes and improvements to the game. And so let's just first check it out. Let's see what we got. Hmm. Might have noticed it visually looks different. Uh, the ants also have different speeds. These are minor changes, but I can go in, eat my score updates. Very good. And I can go down. I go to the oh quickly get the queen. Uh yeah, you saw it too late. I did disable the uh, collision with the ants taking your life away for now because there's a there's a bit bug, but some of you may notice based on the textures that this is running Godot. I have ported the anti to remake that we were making into Godot and there's a various reasons why I did this. Uh, Godot 4 came out and I was really looking forward to that so I wanted to try that out and as much as I really like Raylib I I wanted to move on to Godot after I'd done that and I felt like oh I, would, I was wasting like sort of learning time where I could spend it on Godot so if I made the anti the game completely in Godot and then went back and then the next project we did went you know to Godot it was like oh I'd have to start all over again so it's because I wouldn't I'd have to learn it but also we also have way better pathfinding like with the spider here so the spider now smoothly follows our tongue which is so much nicer as before we were just kind of snapping to each position but there's a lot of extra features that we can use to really make the code better and we can actually use better collision boxes as well so in the again nothing will happen because i've disabled collision but yeah most of the game from what we had is here i've ported most of it now and it's so much easier and the organization is so much better that was one issue was the code got pretty disorganized so we've got ourselves a lot of code to go through so let's just jump into it so this is the main sort of scene the level node is our top node so godot organizes between nodes so this is a node 2d because we're making a 2d game so the, this is our primary node and then we have a tile map and i'm just using this godot creative commons uh, copyright free so it's open source essentially we'll obviously change it but i thought i'd use it because it makes sort of a, a decent tile set so using the colors are kind of clear and organized we have the actual player which is in itself is its own scene so we'll look at that as well a timer which is for the day as before we had to obviously manually calculate how long one minute was using the delta time but with this we can just use the node the timer and set it to if we go in the on our right hand screen inspector Set it as a one shot so it only runs once. We set it for 60 seconds. Like, it's easy. Uh, we have this canvas scene, again, another separate scene we'll look at, but that's where all our UI elements are. The anteater itself is so just a sprite and it has an animated sprite, so we can easily animate it. Just put in another, you know, make a little tile set for anteaters with a little moving thing, add it in, and then we can just tell it to stop or start the animation. Uh, we also have one for the sun as well, using that. and if we go to the i have it hidden as well which is also a great thing i can just toggle toggle whether it's to be directory i've kept the scene all the scenes are in their own folder ideally probably don't want this but because the project's so small we only consist of a few scenes this is completely fine what you'd really or ideally want is to reorganize how many the scenes and uh watch more like the player scene maybe have its own little folder and the actual main level has its own folder and such and such and a tile set and then the assets but i'm gonna tile set this one will probably remain temporary because we'll make our own tile set extra for the map so nice so firstly we'll look at the level nodes code like the main scene essentially you can actually attach a script to any node you want and that really helps organize your code obviously so the tile map has its own script the node has its own scripts that handles a lot of the level generation some people say you should have well i guess you should is have as little code in the main sort of theme and each section should have their script with their code in but for us the the way the game works and that the game is very small it's not too much a big deal we're exporting the enemy scene so the enemy scene is the ants and such and such which is its separate scene and this means we can instantiate which is essentially creating this node that we can then spawn in onto our level and make duplicates of with different types so the ant queen larvae eggs etc and we have a whole bunch of levels like we did in the old one we store the level in the level data in the array so 
what's a wall or what's a traversable part of our maze essentially the height of the level the width of the level the good old tongue retract rate and the move rate we still use with those the arrays for the nodes of our enemies the ants the queen the eggs and the spiders so we we can store these in variables then we can call them we can tell it oh this ant has been killed move this away and we can also change its other properties such as the animation whenever we want within the main level we run a funk called on ready or underscore ready uh, this is part of godot essentially once the scene is loaded or is specifically this node has been loaded it will load these functions or whatever you put in it so firstly we set up the anteater that's the guy that moves on the screen at the top that's the first thing happens before the game starts so we do that and what we can also do is we can also prepare the level so we can generate level and then we can also load the level we can also get for the camera the map limits and the cell size aka the tile size and then we can get the camera and i'm setting essentially the offset offset because i've set i've allowed it so the height and the width can actually be edited there's not much benefit because too big of a level will be too hard if not impossible how are you meant to retract your tongue in time if it's like 100 levels long so but i like a bit of freedom for the player to change and what we do is limit so the camera can't go above here so essentially we're fitting the camera to the level as best as we can and then we set the camera offset of the camera so the level should be as center as we can get it so we have another function for the on ready on anteater at hole that's once the anteater has, has has made it to the center of the hole that means we can begin the level and this is with this green arrow here is implying it's a signal now signals are pretty cool features of godot and it's sort of like a web socket if you're familiar with that we can emit a signal to with data or no data we, and we can tell something to run a function there are inbuilt signals such as oh when the a canvas item here is, has been drawn or visually changed we can then run a piece of code that does something in this case this is a custom uh, signal and it, it triggers once the anti is made to the central screen and that means we can tell the main level code that yep we're ready we can now prepare the player so they can move we can now show the player and we can also load the entities that they're ready to start and then we can begin the daytime the underscore process is essentially the main game loop we have the essentially here we have the rate of code has pretty much remained the same if the level retract time is less than one so and so forth this may be not the best approach some suggest well you should really have this input actions pressed because we're moving the player but we've not got it in the player's scene we've got it in the level node but the reason I've done this is because, well, we necessarily don't have to. I think there might be another way, but I'd still prefer it like this. Is that the player is dependent on the level. They're sort of part of the level. It is not a big deal that we don't have the player movement not in the player scene because we need the information for the width level, the width and the tile size. So it's perfectly fine for us to have it in this level. And again, the game's small. It's not exactly much we can expand. The player is always dependent on the level. So we have the same stuff we also have the r to retract now if you notice that it says uh move right rather than the character it's because if we can go to project settings we can then go to here we get input map we can tell what keys to use and then this can also be like dynamically changed so if the player wants to do key binds they can i was also just testing out a, a pause game feature as well and just to see how easy it is to pause the game well it's really easy you just set get tree pause and it just stops the scene next we have the signal for the day at day timer and so once the timer is timed out so it's 60 seconds has passed it then emits the signal to the function here and here we can send spawn spider we again set the spider the code We're also passing in the tongue the tongue part so that's like the player's length of the tongue which is an array we then again random choose which side it's going to spawn on uh, same as the essentially add the position and add child and then we set we equal that variable that the nodes variable we also have some custom signals which is the player points gains and new points and this just sets the other scene for the canvas points to just update the gui essentially uh, life change as well yeah and that's currently the main level node so far that's pretty nice i think next we'll look at the uh, enemy script so we'd set the speed of up to, to the default of 100 we also store the level width, the side at which the entity is on, the road that they're on, if they're dead, 
the type of enemy they are, the tongue position specifically for the spider, and the tongue index as well, again specifically for the spider. So on ready, so when the uh, entity is seen as ready, we add them to a group called enemies and the groups are really useful because we can tell it all enemies or entities nodes in a group to run this function and we can do that to like when the queen's eaten we can obviously tell them all to be eaten which is great and it can be called from anywhere really here we're, we're setting all the different enemies so we have the set ant which is the width and spawn side so we tell it we want type ant and we also want it to start the animation ant so if we go into the scene tree we can see that the end has a node called animate sprite 2d and if you go on it it sets this and you see each one has their own one now they're only one frame so they're not going to change but we will eventually have an animated ant that will change animation and it's going to be so easy with your dough because we just add new new frames and we can edit how fast we want it 5 fps is currently set but we can slow it down or speed it up we set the ant, we set the index to so how if it layered. So we want it to look a be above the eggs, which we set the eggs as zero. So they're the lowest. We then decide a random speed for the enemy to move at, and then we just save the width and what side they spawned on. <clears throat> Essentially the same for the worm. Spider again, it gets the tongues it's saved on. Queen is again the width. They're more or less the same. They're just defining what they are and what animation they should play. Now in their process, so they're called every frame, that's been hit, <coughs> we get a velocity, a velocity, which is just set for zero for now. We firstly check, is the entity dead? And then we check what animation it is, but I'm going to change this to the type, which is, oh, like so, which I think is just going to be better, rather than using the animation to determine what enemy it is. It also makes the code smaller. If we check what side it spawned on, if it spawned on one, then we're going in left direction, else, we go in the right direction we just increase x by one we then check if the position divided by 64 so you're making it compatible with the level width if it equals zero it means it's out of bounds and that means i'm sorry if it's greater than the level width we reset the position to zero else if the position is divisible by 64 again checking if it's if it's less than zero it's gone out of bounds again and we reset the position to the other side as as before if the type is a spider we get the ton index if, we, if the index is less than the positions, the size is a length of the array, and the index is greater than minus one, which means if it's minus one, it means there's no length. It's it's not even uh, there's no entities in it. It's it's completely empty. We, if we don't check that, it'll essentially uh, crash or yeah crash because it can't find. It's looking for an index in an array that doesn't exist. Essentially, we then use a full function called distance to. And that just gets the position, the vector position of another entity, and then we can just tell it to move towards it. So we get a position distance to the tongue positions, its index on where it's positioned at. And then we just set the velocity. Well, here we're actually checking if it's greater than five. And this is so that if we don't check it, it'll always keep it'll keep jittering because it'll keep trying to move to the position on and off. But we check if it's just as close as we can get it, about five, then it'll stop, it'll do else and move on to the next tongue index. So the velocity again set the position and if if it's you know the in this case the the player is not moved at all since the end of the day then we set the tongue index back uh and then here we're just checking the velocity uh length is greater than zero and then we normalize it and then we just times by the speed and then the position is plus equal velocity times the delta here we have a uh, player position updated so if the player moves we give it a new tongue array uh, this is for the spider so the spider can track where the player currently is positioned and where it needs to go and then we have another signal which is on player area so this parent node is called an area 2d we check the nodes we have a, a signal called area entered and we've connected it to this function on player area enter and what we can do here is check if area name is player and it isn't a type spider because the player cannot eat spiders we've got to check that then we set the position to be off the map the level which is doing negative like completely off the screen nowhere near the player can interact it hit dead true at the moment i've just passed this because for the egg we need to check if all eggs are eaten so the level could change so i've not actually implemented that yet so i would have to implement that 
I need to figure out that. If it's an ant, we set a random respawn time between 5 and 15 seconds and we start this time in the respawn timer here. If it's a queen, we call the group enemies on queen eaten and in this case we're just checking if it's an ant but we also check if it's a spider and then again we do essentially the same code, we kill it off and we set a new respawn timer so every enemies entities except the eggs are eaten and except the queen if it's alive. And then finally we have on timer timeout so that's the respawn timer, we again Generate a new run number and we tell it to spawn on which side and we set it back to dead to false. So it's now back alive. And this is better than creating a new instance uh, when we can just use the existing one essentially. Okay, next is the player and the player has a scene for the tongues. The tongues are a separate scene, which maybe I, I'm thinking of perhaps painting at the, so the tongues are actually part of the player because at the time I thought a scene would be better. But I'm thinking now that it could just be a child that's is a that spawns along it so i'll have to look at that in the future we also have two other signals custom signals life change and points gained it's simple that you know if the player dies or they gain a life it'll update the their lives to the ui and if points gained it updates the ui again we also have the tile size here the tongue parts the amount of lives the level they're on the points and points next life and level width the level is probably i don't need that so probably we'll move that into level node because the player shouldn't be handling what level they're on that should be down to the level node the main scene on ready we just hide it because we're waiting for the anteater to move to the center if we don't hide it and we leave it on you'll see the tongue is just going to spawn at zero zero and look how weird we then play the animation that it's got and then we set the index uh to two so that's uh its position on the map so it's on top of the the ants and the eggs so it's the highest thing on the level so it will be shown as the foreground while everything else is the background next we have the prepare player which sets the level width and then just gets the center of the map by dividing width by two and we get the center and we just snap it to that position and it's a bit different to our regular version we get in the level root and that's the our main scene that we're currently on so that will be the level node that we have so the get tree get root is the is the like the parent node we get we didn't instantiate the tongue scene, but again, I said I might go add the tongues just to our child of this rather than a, a pack scene that we're importing in. We get in the actual position. So this is actually in our rate of code. So the actual position is the position of X plus the new position you want to go to. Then the new position is rounding down. So if we round up, it, it, it's slightly off so that you can actually move outside the map and whatnot. We don't want that. So there's a bit of error in that. And it's just the actual position divided by the tile size. Actual position is our actual pixel position, the tile size is how we calculate the tile set size. And then we'd convert that to a single dimension uh, position for the array that we're going to compare it to. And then we also get in the tongue, the current tongue's array size. We get if level is this position it equals zero, so essentially a position where it can move to. We check is the tongue array size greater than zero? If so, then the actual position if it equals its last position so the tongue's position then we can know we can remove that tongue we can cure it if we can get rid of it we also pop back so remove that element from the array and then we set that position to the actual part then we return it and exit the function else we go through the tongue parts if the actual position equals the end position we return it as false so we don't want a player to move into into themselves with the tongue if if it gets past that then we just equals a new position we add a new tongue and then we go to the root and we add the child of the tongue. This is the tongue position so it can interact with everything else. And then we get, again, set the position. We also rotate, which we get the angle to the tongue position. So the, the tongue is actually flipped. So when it gets the angle to, it's technically facing it. But because the animation is flipped, it looks like the tongue is, is facing out. So if we play the game quickly, you see that as I move, the tongue is always that, but it is a problem when I get to this. When I get to the hole, it's it should be facing up. So we need to put a correction for that as well. And then obviously, if it was one, which would imply it's the wall, we just return false. It didn't move. Uh, the retract tongue is essentially the same as well. Get the length of the tongue, put it in zero. Rotate, get the get the angle two. So just forward face the tongue position to wiggle at the end. And we just set the, the position of the last tongue. That, that's all it is, really. And then we obviously remove it from the array. On player hit, 
uh, if we check if it's the tongue parts or well, we go for the tongue and just do free it a better way rather than go for a ray is add the tongues to a group and we then we can just tell each node instantly to q3 rather than for loop it so this is we need to change that to tongues to be a group if we obviously use it as its own scene uh, and then we set the ray tongue parts back to zero we would decrease the lives we reset the player and then we admit the like the new life change this is uh, for the animation so add signal so when the animation is finished we want to then reverse the animation so we just check what frame it's on so if it's on frame two we then play it backwards else we play it back from the beginning so that adds that wiggle animation so it's like reversing itself back and forth we play it you can see here up oh, back forth back forth <coughs> so this is if the another signal which makes life easier because we can check collision with the nose and signals of Godot which is very nice we check if the enemy's in a group which is the enemies it's the egg we've given it 10 points ant 100 worm 200 queen a thousand and for whatever reason it doesn't match any of those we just we're gonna add nothing just in case for some reason we collide with something that's considered enemy but is somehow doesn't have a type which shouldn't happen but then we can just set that in case we just set it to zero so there's nothing we then emit the signal to do again the front end ui we're updating the points of the ui updates which is good the points ui is really simple oh that's not it here we can go to 2d and we can see this is what it looks like as a scene it essentially acts sort of like css styling you've got the margins you have anchor them where you want so really nice and easy this is still temporary so we need to choose a font and make it match like a pixel the original game and aesthetic but it's also a response to so say the user changes the window size it will match that window size rather than being absolute positions but we could have it absolute positions that are relative to the level so it always looks like it's on top of the like it matched the original where the score and the lives are all at the bottom of the level and at the top of the level and then i think lastly is the anti decode we have the anti debt hole all it really is saying is oh we're getting the level center and then we're just finding the center of the hole and moving the anti to it and once it's there we set it back to null so it doesn't trigger this again and then that's it uh it's just checking if it moves to the center really really simple so i think this video has gone on long enough and i've shown you pretty much most of the code that is now been ported over to godot Sorry if you were interested in RelayLib, but I don't think I've done with it. I think I feel like I like RelayLib as sort of a software front end for certain things rather than a video game engine. You know, it's designed for that. I do like to use it for demonstrations, like using it for visually showing L systems and such. But now that we have the code, majority of the code ported, we can now add on some more features and hopefully yeah, this, it shouldn't take long for this game to finish now. We have most the enemy UI, if we can see players we just need to fix the issues such as the players uh, the ants hitting the enemy or hitting you sorry when you're eat when you've eaten them uh, we need to also hide the ants that go off screen so we need to somehow put away you need to add a background uh we need an end screen and options plus saving thanks for watching if you made it this far and please do subscribe as we're going to do more game development topics and other related game related information Thank